Hi, everybody. Hello there. How are you? Uh, this is our uh, little uh, uh, our uh, little program that we do on uh, uh, Mondays. Sometimes uh, we call it the pop up. It's just you know, it's a little pop up show that we do, and we uh, we go to people and ask them to just join us. And it's kind of a nicer show than the one we do at night. It's it just the Somehow the people who call are, are very civil, and we really appreciate it. And I already have a whole bunch of people waiting to come on, so let me just let me open up my hazelnut uh, coffee here. This is my newest uh, treat. It's lo low carb, no carbs, actually. Well, one carb or something like that. And uh, then I uh, I have to shake it up. There we go. Throw the. Uh, uh, the packaging out and uh, let's see here. Let's uh, let's. Oh, we got a lot of people ready to go here. Let me see here. First of all, there's Edward Berger. Now I don't know who Edward Berger is, but this is the first time he's been here. But he's from San Francisco, so he's got to be okay. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Deutsch is here. Uh, he always joins us on Mondays, uh, as does Rick Sheckman, and. Um, Marjorie Miller is joining us, ladies and gentlemen. There she is. Well, there's her breast. Uh, there, there we go. We're getting her. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you? Good. Good. I mean, good. It was kind of like a tentative good. Jackie, are you you're not feeling that great today? No, I feel great. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure that you're feeling no. okay. Ed no, I feel great. Edward, you're from the Bay Area, I would assume. No, I'm in Flushing. I just put this in to fool you. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> you're from Flushing? Yeah. Well, meet Shecky. Shecky lives in Flushing. Oh, that's good. Oh, I live in Hollis. Oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just Flushing in the other room before I came in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, big, big Chinese population there, which leads us to yeah. call it Flushing. Mm. Yeah. And uh, uh, so how are you all doing on this Labor Day? Drowning. Oh, wait a minute. Here, Lynn. I got <laughs> Lynn on here, too. Lynn was, I forgot to flip him on or flip him off or something. Hello, Lynn. Lynn's out in California. So he's our California representative. Why are you moving all around like that, Marjorie? Trying to get the spot. Oh really? Oh, I haven't seen that. Pixar, I haven't seen that Pixar shirt on you in years. Well, I cut the sleeves off this summer. Did you really? Yeah. Thanks. Oh. Okay. Please. We got that when we were at Pixar. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's like I got. Uh, what, what, what did we get? We got. Uh, we have. We have pullovers. Or. Yeah. Whatever. Sweatshirts. Sweat. No, they're What's not sweatshirts. It? They're uh, you know they have zippers up the front and so on. Polo. What what do they call them? Ponchos? I don't know. I have no idea. Jackets? jackets. Sweatshirt jackets. Sweatshirt jackets. Sweatshirt jackets. Something like you know, you know when you hoodie, bet, like it's hoodie. like a sweatshirt, it's a but it's got a zipper on it. Alex, it's a hoodie. A hoodie? Uh, it is a hoodie, isn't it? Is there a hood on it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. We're arguing about our clothing now. Yes, we solved that third world problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll, put, I'll put on my green shirt. There we go. <laughs> I had something <laughs> green here the other day I was thinking of putting on, but, you know, it, but, uh, so you can just disappear. Well, I love it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you like my new newsroom for my podcast yeah. I'm building? Yes. Uh, oh, That'd yeah. Be nice. Yeah. I just got to get my logo. I got to lay it in here yet, and I'm ready to go next week for my first interview. Who are you gonna Who are you gonna interview? I I'm talking to an an economist at, from Cleveland State who, who we're going to discuss the difference between capitalism and corporatism, mm -hmm. and why the Republican Party are not capitalists. Yeah, I I would say. Well, what is the difference? Give us a good definition of the difference. Between well, well, at, at the core of, of capitalism, there, there, is, there is an ethical code. Mm -hmm. Corporatism, there's none. And at the core of capitalism, you, you invest your profits in delivering better, making better products, serving your, your customer better. 
Mm -hmm. Whereas in corporatism, you take all of your profits and you use them to create barriers of trade so that nobody else can compete. And then the quality doesn't matter. Wow. Yeah, try to open up a cable company in New York and see how that goes for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, try, try to compete with AT&T and Verizon for cell service. Yeah. Or, or even, even, you know, open up, open up a diaper website and see what well, Amazon though, uh, When it comes to cable here, I, I do have a good argument I can make. Okay, like if, if all of a sudden Fios raises my rates too much, I can always say I'm going to go over to Spectrum. So there is that. It's not much of a choice, but there is a then, choice. The, then you live in a unique place. Here, you have, if you want cable, you got one choice. And then the satellite, the satellite companies came in, and guess who bought all of them? AT&T. Yeah, they're all owned by, it, it, you, you know the case study from diapers.com? Diapers.com? Yeah, diaper.com opened and they were selling diapers to at oh. a very inexpensive price, easy delivery. Amazon tried to buy them. They said, no, we're, we're growing, we're making money. So Amazon went to the diaper manufacturers, outbid them, uh -oh. went to market below cost, and crushed their business and bought them for pennies on the dollar when they went out, when they were about to go out of business. Wow. It was completely legal. That's corporatism. That's Is that completely legal? It was based on the laws that the lobbyists that the big corporations got to change the laws to, to so it's not predatory. Yeah. Oh, look who's here. Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen. Can you hear me? She's in a halo. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, there we go. Now she's connecting to audio. Freaking audio. So stupid. Yeah. <laughs> You can you know something? You've got that window in back of you, and so that really obliterates you. Oh, there you go. Fine. Oh, but there's still one behind you that's got light. Ah! <laughs> yeah, just just move it over. Yeah. I'm trying. <laughs> Squished. Ah. I think Help. your lens is foggy. Yeah, and then you got to clean your lens. <laughs> the spring slogan nine. Okay. Actually, have, dude, oh my god! Jeez. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, we uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, we 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 do kind of. You don't have a choice out there. You're correct. No. You know. No. Well, there in Fairlawn near Akron, Ohio. Yeah. The municipality created wait, what's wait, called. Wait, hold, hold on one second. That only made it worse. Oh, ah! What are you using? A dirty rag? <laughs> you, you, you wipe the lens with bacon. And you know what it is? My computer's sweating because it's so fucking hot here. Stop yelling. <laughs> you don't have to yell. Yeah, right. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you speak up a little? Yeah, yeah. Now, that, that, that's, hot. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. Yeah. Oh, geez, like Tony. Remember Tony with his lens? It got so dirty that we couldn't see him any longer. I thought it was maybe Shepard yeah. falling. I couldn't remember. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, getting back to the corporatism yeah. thing. You're yes. right, though. I mean, we, we have today very little choice in yep. services. I mean, if, if you want to go get uh, insurance, how many insurance companies are there? You know? Well, they, they all price fix. So that you can't, they can't be competitive. They created laws with and rules with their actuaries to, to prevent being able to truly offer it at a reasonable rate. So for, well, for, exa for example, there is no statistical correlation between somebody who's had minor traffic tickets and people who get in accidents. Major traffic tickets, yes. You get one traffic ticket, they've all agreed that they can raise your rates, even though there's no, there's no data behind it saying that they can. So you, you're driving down the road 60 and a 55 and some happy cop writes you a ticket, not only do you got to pay the ticket, but you're going to have an insurance increase for probably the next five years. Really? And, and if you open an insurance company and try to do something different than that, you're, you're breaking the actuary rules that are tied in based on the lobbyists. Yeah. So there's, but in Fair Fairlawn, Ohio created municipal internet. So where I am, the cheapest internet you can get is about 60 bucks a month for 100 speed. Mm -hmm. In Fairlawn, because it's owned by the municipality, mm -hmm. you get 300 up and down, like a corporate internet, mm -hmm. for 40 bucks a month. 
and and they have no customer issues whatsoever because they own they own the entire thing. Cablevision, all of the major internet companies sued for years to try to prevent the municipality from owning its own internet. Well, Shecky, your internet is FiOS, and I would imagine Edward is yours FiOS. Yeah, I FiOS. Yeah, yeah. We have FiOS. Huh? Yeah. We have FiOS. I don't know what that is. Huh? Is that a municipally owned internet? No, FiOS is uh, is is Verizon. Yeah, the here in, at my house, I have a choice. I can have AT and T, or I can have it from the cable company, and there's no other option. Well, for years we had Time Warner cable. Yeah, that's what we had. And before that, it was Sterling, and before yeah. it was uh, Manhattan um, Cable. Manhattan Cable. Yeah. And uh, so uh, it was the only cable company, and Verizon wanted to get into the cable business, so they went around the cable business and went to the fiber optic business. Right. And they managed to be able to put cable in everybody's home using fiber optic, which uh, they, I think they got a different franchise from the city. But that was the only way we got competition in this town. Yeah. You know. Corporatism is totally anti-competitive. It's not capitalism. Yeah. 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 So uh, but that's, that's one of the topics. And then and, there's and another. Trump is, Trump is a corporate, right? Absolutely. He's not a capitalist. And the funny thing is most of the people in this country who call themselves democratic socialists are actually speaking in pure capitalism. They're not socialists like the Marxists and the, because in, in regular capitalism, small business is the generation of, of the economy, yeah. which is what most democratic but, but, socialists but, but, stand for. But socialism doesn't exclude the right. existence of capitalism. Right. It is right. simply part of the system. Yeah. But yeah. the problem is that we've let the right wing jackasses define what these words mean. Yeah. When, when really, if they look at it, they're, they're not capitalists. Well, I'll give you an example of something where we, we, we pre defined it and, and nobody ever kind of got the message. Down in um, uh, South America, you had uh, Allende, I think, was the, uh, the, the head of the, the Peru. Venezuela was it? Venezuela. Venezuela. I'm trying to remember which country Allende was, but we we threw him out of there. We the CIA yeah. created a coup and threw Allende out. One of the reasons they threw Allende out was he was a communist. But yeah. but what he had installed in his country, uh, I, I think he was Bolivian. It Could was be Bolivia. Bolivia. You yeah. might be right. Yeah, it uh, was Bolivia. What he had installed in his country was democratic communism. Now, people go, you can't, you can't have democracy and communism. Yes, you can. Communism is a, a financial way of running your country. And democracy is the political way you run a country. Am I right? So you could have a communist democracy. And that's well, what he had. And the thing was, the United States didn't like the idea because it was not a good example to Americans that you could have communism and a democracy. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I lived in South America for about 10 years in Brazil. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm quite accustomed. I was, I was in Venezuela at a factory when his government nationalized the factory I was selling to. Yeah. And the thing that people don't understand is he was not a communist or a socialist. He was an authoritarian who used that label to take over the country. Well, uh, uh, Allende was thrown out, and who who took his place was Pinochet. So that's who was Pinochet. Pinochet. That's a different country. Then what country was it? Pinochet was uh, Chile. Okay, Chile. Then it was uh, Allende was Chile, and and when we threw Allende out of there, created a coup, Pinochet took over and became the worst dictator in South America. Yeah. Well, when I when I first lived in Brazil, it was wasn't too long after their dictatorship finally ended. Yeah, but but the, the thing that people don't get is our current president is so much closer in his policy to these South American dictators <laughs> than than he is a Republican or or a, a person who supports democracy. Yeah. yeah, the very the very playbook that he's playing is is the, the fascist dictator playbook. Oh, but when they get in, they pick what label they want to be that they want to be. You know, he's going to say he's a, a, a dictator, but he's a dem for democracy. We won't be a democracy. Well, you know what's starting to bother me a little bit are the demonstrations that are going on in the country because they're playing right into Trump's yep. team. I agree. 
Uh, it's exactly what Trump wants. He wants rioting. <clears throat> But they keep arresting these agitators and finding out that they're not with the protesters. No, I, you know, yes. I, I saw that guy with his feet on fire, right? Because somebody threw a Molotov cocktail at him. And all I could think was, what Trump supporter threw that? Yeah. You know, yeah. because there are instigators in these. Uh, in these. They, they've arrested many. The evidence is clear that that's what's happening. Yeah. Uh, Edward, where do your politics lie? Uh, in the middle. <laughs> I don't like Trump. Yeah. Is that the most New York voice you've ever heard? In your life? Uh -oh. <laughs> what do you do, Edward? What kind of? Uh, I am retired. I am retired. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Hon. How old are you? Uh, sixty-eight. Sixty-eight, and yeah. you're retired, and I'm eighty, and I'm not. No, I actually. I'm, yeah, 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 I know. I'm kind of forced into retirement. Yeah. You know, this is just kind of a hobby. With Right, right. Because no, nobody wants to listen to old people. <laughs> That's why we're all here together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You now, you know, uh, uh, Kathleen, you haven't moved yet to upstate California, have you? Nope. When probably you... within, uh, probably by November. By November? Yeah, most everything's packed. I'm going to start selling off the furniture, but... Um, I've pretty much given away almost three quarters of my possessions, which is a real good feeling because especially now there's a lot of people that need. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Well, I mean, the thing is that I've been up to that place you're moving to. Yeah. And it's a beautiful home. I mean, you're, it's going to be a great place for your kid to grow up. To, oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah, we're ready to get away from Tracy. I mean, you know, being stalked and being so close. Yeah. The junior high school that my son went to, um, they were averaging about four to five fights a week. Oh, really? I mean, one kid got his head kicked in for seven bucks. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They, they robbed him for seven bucks or somebody paid him seven bucks to kick him? No, he got his head kicked in because the kid wanted his seven bucks. Oh, Where is this? This is here in Tracy, California, and then they only suspend the kid for a couple of days. You know, luckily my son, he's a good kid. I know. And I tell him, you know, if anyone messes with you, don't engage. They'll go on to the next person. But I tell him, no. And I tell him, if that, someone hits you, you do an about face and you tell the teachers. I said, I'm going to have the kid hooked up. And if the principal doesn't like it, I'm going to have the principal hooked up too. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm going to go strictly by the law because there has to be consequences. Yeah. Well, I'm I mean, only, uh, I'm, I'm only 15 minutes from you. I'm down here in Livermore. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> Tracy when I first moved here 20 years ago was considered a small town, but it's, Absolutely. it's, it's not anymore. No. I, mean, I, work, no I worked for the school district now since 2015. No, to me, uh, what Tracy was, you took a left there to get to San Francisco. Right, right. <laughs> really, what crazy was, yeah. And I, oh, I, I used to go back and I worked in the desk, desk the radio station. But I, the, my parents' place was in Marin County, and on weekends I didn't want to stay in Modesto. Why? Oh, right. what was happening in in Modesto in in that time um, was wow. I think that George Lucas was growing up there. That's why he wrote the movie about American Graffiti about. Modesto. <laughs> yeah, movie, Modesto. Where, where were you in 62? I was in Modesto. That's where I was in 62. Uh, Modesto is absolutely massive. Is it really? It, it is, is now. Massive. Yeah. 5,000 people. And I would. Well, well, they wanted, I was working in Oakland at UPS, and because I lived in Tracy, they were going, why don't you... Um, transfer to the series center and I go it's 45 minutes from my house just like Oakland you know I mean, the, it was I gotta, that big I gotta tell you you're talking about kids beating up kids did you ever have that problem in school Marjorie when you were going to school back in the stone age I'm back in the stone age though <laughs> oh, but you know what I'm talking about because I there, there were there were kind of like I don't know it was we did have games and things like that you know, I lived in Marin. It, it, it was a different kind of gang. You know, it wasn't, and nobody carried weapons or knives or anything like that. Maybe they carried a knife for this stuff, but that was about it. Um, 
But I didn't hear about any of this going on. And if anybody was going to get beaten up, it was going to be me. <laughs> so, um, but um, uh, the fact is, when I lived in, uh, in, in uh, Modesto, it, it, you went through Tracy to get to San Francisco. You turned left to Tracy. And uh, yeah. uh, I... Um, uh, I hardly ever was there. The only time I started going in Tracy was when you moved there. Yeah. And I came out to see you. you yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it, but when you say Modesto is a huge town now, I can't even I can't even fathom that because our radio station was in the middle of a peach orchard. <laughs> Man, not anymore. That's the other sad thing. A lot of our farmland out here is turning into either homes. Or warehouses. Mm -hmm. Wow. So nobody did anything to kind of prevent that from happening, you know, to maintain. The it's system. all about the money, which is very sad. You know what? 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 It, how about how about Shecky, where you live out in Queens? You must have seen a lot of changes. In the, well, in the when I went to high school in Flushing, it was all Jews, and now, of course, it's all Asians. Oh, okay. I mean, even in there was no Chinese restaurants when I went to high school there. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, and now we now when I go out to see, we have had to decide which Chinese restaurant to go. No. To. Yeah, you know, I had the delis right around the corner from my school, but they're all you know long gone. Yeah, the only thing there is one diner there that you take me to. Yeah, there's some diners, but I'm saying in actual Flushing Main Street that area, mm -hmm. you know, where the seven train bottoms out. Now you're in, uh, in, but you're not. You're in what? What subdivision of Flushing are you? You, you live right up the street from Trump's ancestral home. Yes, and Cuomo's. <laughs> is Cuomo close to the Trump home? Cuomo is six block. Was six blocks south of me. Trump is four blocks. Uh, I guess I'd call it west of me. West of you. So basically, Cuomo and Trump in the same area. Yes. We got two entirely different kinds of people out of that. <laughs> well, we had all the politicians living in this neighborhood. Really? Oh, well, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're what? Flushing the states? Or, uh, well, it's called um, Jamaica States or Hollisswood. Yeah, or Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we had Donald Manis, you know, who was like, got caught up in the park beer <laughs> scandal in the 70s, who one day took a kitchen knife and, you know, shoved it into his heart. Oh, really? Ugh. Oh, what a nice way to go. Uh, I was during the Ed Koch era. Huh? I was during the Koch era. During the Koch era. Um, none of it did. Uh, uh, let me just see. Yes, we've had our share of crooked politicians that yes. live here. Yes, of course. Well, uh, New York is kind of the land of crooked politicians, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, when I look back at the history of New York City, all you hear about are things like Tammany Hall, and yeah. you know the mob running the city for a long time. Oh, yeah, that, like you know, which is why I can't understand why the restaurants haven't opened, because they're all mob run. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How much money have they lost on you know linens and you know tablecloths in the last six months? Yeah, you're right. They run those. So that's why I'm amazed that they, we're the only five in New York State. We're the only five places that. Do not have indoor dining of any sort. Wow, I didn't stop yes, to think yes, about that. Yes. that and, and so I guess Cuomo isn't in the pocket of the mob in any way, right? Well, his dad. Well, they always wondered why <laughs> Cuomo's dad didn't run for president because he because was, he was Italian. He was such a great speaker. I mean, he just yeah. He, and I don't know. Look, I have no idea if there were some skeletons in that man's closet. I have no idea. There were hints. There you, were know, hints. you know what it could be? The skeletons could have been not in their direct closet, but in the family closet. Yeah. Thing. I mean, remember when Rudy, Rudy Giuliani was the greatest guy on the face of the earth and his little pal, um, you know, you know who, Judith Regan's pal. Oh, you know, the one that went to jail. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, no, but we thought those guys deserve statues on Park Avenue, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they're both bigger crooks than most people. Now, how did Giuliani go from being America's mayor to the biggest asshole in America, or America's asshole? <laughs> because he, he hooked up with Trump? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
No, he became a lobbyist and was just taking money from dictatorships around the world. And, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I. Uh, so he set up, remember, he set up that company where I'm going to keep you safe because I'm America's mayor. Well, no, he and had. He started making deals with dictators. He had a, uh, it was a security company. Yeah. But it was and, all and security. And he, for, did with, he did it with, well, what's his name? The, his pal, who was the. The one that went to jail. One that when went, went to jail. jail. Yeah. <laughs> Judith Regan. Bernie boy. Carrick. Bernie Carrick. Yes. Yes. And but I. Went, know, all of his clients were tin horn dictators or, you know. I once asked uh, Judith, and I don't think she'd mind me saying this, uh, to begin with, I often said to her, you know, I, I think the world would be good. And I, I think you're terrific. I said, but why you ever went out with Bernard Carrick is beyond me. And she looked at me and she said, give me a break. I like power. <laughs> but that's what New York runs on. Yeah. 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 But I said, were those people, Giuliani and Carrick and so on, were they kind of easy in their way of operating? And she said, you don't even want to know. She said, it, it was just, you know. I mean, the, the, I, the, the, the impression I got was Giuliani was one major crook. Yeah, and you remember he had the love pad across the street from the remnants of the World Trade Center. That's right, right. As he was telling us, what a great job, I'm America's mayor. Yeah. yeah. And it was hot and cold running women coming through, yeah. including your friend Judith Regan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think she never, she never had the thing with Giuliani. Carrick. No, but Carrick was living with them. Oh, they were they were roomies. They were sharing the apartment. They were roomies. Well, it was the love shack. Edward, you know what we're talking about here. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, and let's not forget. I um, loved it. I really believe Annie's the one who had the how many hundreds of pounds of gasoline on the twentieth floor across the street. Yes, from the that was that. He didn't want it to go to Brooklyn, so. He the yeah, they told him he, he 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 literally put tanks upon tanks of gasoline in a building across from the World Trade Center. Twentieth floor. In and fact, that it was, was World Trade Center. Center. What was it? Was it World Brooklyn. Trade Center eight or something? They all said go to Brooklyn. He said no. And they said you shouldn't put it there because if, if anything ever happens to the World Trade Center, that's going to go too. And sure enough, when World Trade Center <laughs> went. World Center 8 went and blew up. Yeah. And that was America's mayor. That was the guy who saved New York City. And that's the guy who also tried to cancel the election that year, like Trump probably would do it. Yeah. Oh, right, he did do it. He did do you it. know, I was working for... Country. You can't have an election, you know. Yeah. I was working for UPS 9-11, so, but what's really weird is we got a heads up July 18th. 2001, I get a fax. Mm -hmm. So we have a meeting with the FAA and there were all these rumblings between the CIA, FBI, DEA. Nobody was communicating with each other. They knew an airport was going to get hit, but they didn't know which one. So of course at UPS, our Oakland hub is not but a half a mile from the Oakland airport where we have a hub. So as security, you know, no more cell phones, pagers, allowed. We, we used to let the taxi drivers bring the pilots into the building. We had to put a kibosh on that, but we couldn't tell anybody why we were doing this. And then what we'd do is we'd get all hooded up and we'd sneak onto the tarmac to make sure that our employees are challenging any strangers that get onto the um, tarmac. And I'll never forget because I worked at night shift. It was actually Alex that woke me up when the planes hit and I was so out of it, I literally thought that one of our UPS planes had hit one of the twin towers. Yeah. Well, I had called Alex at six o'clock California time. Right. right. Said, Alex, I, look, I know it's early. Turn your TV on. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what Alex told me because I was so disoriented. He said, turn on your TV. Oh, wait a minute. You told me turn on your TV and I think I stayed on the phone with you at the moment. Yeah. And, yeah. and what did you hear from the other side of the phone? I think I said to you something like, Oh, this wasn't world, an accident. Is the World Trade Center on fire? <laughs> <laughs> no, an airplane is hitting. Yeah, because I thought, you know, I, I sat here for a few minutes saying, it's six o'clock in California. Should I call him? And then it was like, oh, screw it. I better call him. He doesn't, yeah. 
he does a chat show. You know, he better. Well, I had to do a show over at, at CNET that morning, and uh, what I did immediately as soon as you called me and I saw this going on, and then I think maybe I was around and saw the second plane yeah. hit the, the tower. I immediately called the uh, guy uh, in my in the car. My instinct was you get in the car and you go to the radio station. Yeah. Because they're going to need you, you know. And sure enough, they, they needed me. But I was the only one that showed up. None of the other people cared, you know. Uh, but And I, I went and voted that day. It was primary day. Was it primary day? It was wow. primary day and both buildings were on fire. And I go over there and I vote and say, you know, this ain't going to count, but I'm here to vote. Edward, where were you when all that happened? You, you... Well, I, I uh, worked at night, so I was in bed, and uh, I heard either a radio, a, a TV downstairs, or a radio outside that said one tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. And uh, that's when I figured out there's something wrong, and I woke up, I found out what happened. Yeah, but was your first instinct was, I knew that was that was a well-built building? <laughs> 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 How about you, Marjorie? Where were you when that happened? Everybody's going to remember that. You know? Yeah, it was with my friend Ann. Yeah. And and uh, how, what was your first reaction to it? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It didn't go below 14th Street. Wow. You know. I hate to say it. I always thought they were two ugly buildings. So it was kind of like, <laughs> well. Well, no, I thought it uh, was better. I, yeah, but you know, Jack, you came out of the subway. You turned around you saw them. And it gave you your bearings. You knew where North was, where yeah. South was. Yeah, they were some two ugly buildings. When, when they, they weren't the Chrysler building. They weren't the Empire State building. It, it, when that happened, I had to hand it to Osama bin Laden for his aesthetic choice. You yeah. Know? <laughs> because everybody, you know, it, it, nobody liked those buildings. They hated those buildings. They referred to them as the buildings the computers came in. The box of computers <laughs> came in. Yeah. But again, you remember a plane hit the Empire State Building in 46 or 47. Yeah. It didn't fall down. Well, no. yeah, but it was a it was a, 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 a PC or something like that, right? It wasn't a major plane. It was a military plane. <laughs> wasn't it like a two-seater or something like that? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no, it was, it was bigger than that. It wasn't you a B-17, remember? but it was a bomber of some oh, sort really? at that period. Yeah, you know, well, the pictures of it are it's sticking into the building, right? Yeah, it's sticking in the building. Yeah. yeah. Except, you know, my cool. brother in law, he says to this day, and it haunts him, and he has nightmares. You know, he, he was staying at the Hilton in between the two buildings, and he said he'll never forget the sound of bodies. Boy. Hitting. And I remember my boss showing, pulling me into the office and showing me stills, and I flipped the fuck out and said why are you showing me this these are people's mothers fathers brothers i mean i lost it okay, you know something this discussion we're having has just been generated naturally for one reason or another and i just looked at the calendar and friday is 9 11 yeah you know so uh we pretty much have you know uh, this is a, this is a memory of something long past. Led, you were out in California at the time, right? That, sound asleep. My ex-wife came in and woke me up and said, "Plane hit the tower," and I sat there and you know, turned on the TV. You know, I mean, yeah, I was born in New York, of course, so I certainly have friends and family there. But yeah, I, have no idea where going. I was I was sitting in my office in Brazil, and the phone rang, and I had to switch the security camera television over to find out what was going on and I remember seeing the, the the tower on fire and the cameras pointed and I said to my my assistant that, that ran the office I said with the cameras up there I hope there's not a second plane and just as I said it a second one came in and hit the tower Jeez. the first one was to get the cameras focused and the second one was the show now what I had to take the phone off the hook for three days at the office because every news media outlet was calling me as if I knew something about it because I was the American guy <laughs> and, and it was, what, what, what's your comment? I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know any more than you do. I know less. You're the news outlet. I'm a, I'm a guy in an office. I. <laughs> this will be the 19th, uh, 19th yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, um, they're still running ads on TV. If you've died, know if anybody's died from cancer and lived near 9-11, file your 
claim now. <laughs> um, you know. The uh, the year after that, so September 11, 2002, nobody wanted to get on an airplane. So there was an airline running a, a special out of San Francisco to Vegas. One dollar. One dollar? <laughs> really? So me and my, I stood up in my cubicles. I said, hey, who wants to go to Vegas next week? And like five hands went up. And we, I went to buy the tickets and they were sold out. But they had five first class seats left, which cost us ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't make it to the States for almost two months after I couldn't, wow. couldn't and uh, and at that time I had I had a full beard and we get harassed they I, I was in an airport and the, at that time it was still whack and hot security not TSA and I walked up to, to the to get on the through security and the guy looked at me and he says hey Osama you have to have a seat we got to search you oh <laughs> my name's not Osama and I'm not a, I'm not of Middle Eastern descent what's not Osama and the response wow. was keep it up and you'll get the real search I got wow. shaved off the beard nobody bothered me since we're being joined you know, by Brian Neary Brian <laughs> Brian uh, hey Brian in case you don't uh, haven't been paying attention we we're talking about 9/11 and I suddenly realized we just started talking about it, and that 9-11 is coming up on Friday. So we're asking people where they were. Now, you live in California. My friend's birthday is 9-11, and we used to have a party for him every year, and then he said, well, I'm fucked now. We're not going to have any more parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, when that happened, and I remember also I was working at the same company. Remember they, remember, didn't they do something downstairs in the in the Underneath, they had some fire or something like that that they had already tried the first time. Before. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. About 90. That was a couple of years earlier. About it was 90. in the 90s. It was in the 90s. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they, they tried to blow up. Too. They tried to blow up the building by blowing it from underneath. So they blew they up. They were in the parking garage. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. so I, I remember that as we're at the same company. And then when that happened, yeah, I went to, yeah, we, yeah, I, I remember I was working at the company when it happened. And again, yeah, it was early in the morning. And actually, I think I turned on the turn on my car to drive to work, and they're already talking about it on. on the well, radio. just like Trump seems to have an obsession with Obama, uh, Osama bin Laden seemed to have an obsession with the World Trade Center. For some reason, <laughs> that was a target, and I guess because it stands up there like a like a chip on somebody's shoulder, saying "Knock it off, knock it off," you know. Yeah, yeah my at two thousand for like. Three years straight, my friends moved. A few of my friends moved to Vegas, and we're going to Vegas to party all the time. And my my best friend, he is my traveling partner. He called me right when 9/11 happens, and I said, "Yeah, dude, I already see what's happening." He goes, "Dude, but do you know how cheap tickets are going to be right now to fly to Vegas?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doll. So we, we did. Uh, we did. National Airlines was out of Vegas, and it was like old TWA. And so it was like that seventy five dollars for round trip, and we had bonus miles and everything. So. You uh, you missed it just before you came on. I was saying I went to Vegas for a dollar on National oh. Airlines. <laughs> uh, uh, it was December. It was September eleven, two thousand and two, when nobody wanted to. Uh, yeah, you, you know, FedEx. FedEx was strictly an air company, and they were screwed because as soon as Alex called me, within fifteen minutes, my boss calls me and says, "You need to report." to the Oakland airport, have your AOA badge, which gives me full run. I can run out on the tarmac, have your California ID and your, your badge. And the weirdest thing was you, you come up and they had Doolittle all blocked off to the Oakland airport. Mm, and you, yeah. So you show all your IDs and they're like, okay, go in. You go in and the parking lots were packed. Mm. And you park your car and you go into the um, terminals and it was crickets. It was nothing but us. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Look, look, look. Why were why were the parking lots packed? But the air they were packed what? because think about it. People had flown, and they weren't well, coming back. Right. Everything was grounded. So I was in meetings with the FAA every four hours, and so FedEx security goes, "What'd you guys do with your volume?" I said, "We just loaded it onto uh, big rigs, and it's over. It's in the Oakland hub, and we're putting all the air pack." On trailers, I go. What are you guys doing? He goes, we're we're fucking dead in the How water. How long was it after that that you finally UPS finally started delivering it? Well, I mean, no, we delivered the whole. I mean, we we kept going like there was no tomorrow. We just couldn't fly our packages out, so we put all our air packages on trailers. I see, and then took them somewhere by road. So six days to the East Coast. I see. Okay. I mean, but at least we were luckily, able to still get luckily, everything out. Amazon was just starting up about that. <laughs> no, I don't. 
Amazon, was, we weren't barely. even getting any Amazon packages. What, when you know what's happen? funny is that UPS, we get little Amazon packages, we scan them, we put them in the bags, and we deliver them to the post office. And then the post office goes and delivers them because they don't have the plane capacity for the packages. Mm. Yeah, Amazon started like in 94, I want to say, but by the time 9-11 was around, they were, they were shipping mostly by the post office. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hi Marjorie. Hi, hi Marjorie. Hi. It's good to see you. I used to complain because we never saw you on Friday nights anymore. But <laughs> I'll take Monday for an hour. That's better. I like Monday better. Yeah, well, I I have her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You're so lucky. You don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> there's no way. There's and especially during this this coronavirus thing, there's no way of avoiding her. You know, <laughs> she used to go to work every day. She was there till about four o'clock in the afternoon. And I could, you know, I could uh, do things and so on. Now I wake up and the, she's the first face I see. You know, your dream has come true, Alex. The dream has come <laughs> true. Every month, you live in the dream. It's, a tribute, it's a tribute to our marriage that I have yet to try to kill it. And that she has yet to try and kill me. Not that the thought hasn't come past our mind. <laughs> no. When you did your vows, did they say anything about pandemic? No. 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 But they did say for better, for worse, in life and death. So, uh, you know, that, that seemed good. Um, are, you, uh, are you married, Edward? No, I am uh, single. You are single? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, were you ever married? Uh, no. No. Really? <laughs> good yeah. for you. Good for you. Well, Shecky's yeah. never been married. Oh, that's good. That's good. It must be a, kind of a flushing disease. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of like that virus, you know, same thing. Yeah, yeah. We don't meet many people who haven't at least been married once. Mm. Well, I keep my romances out of town so I can get away. Yeah, well, I mean, well, like, for instance, Shecky, tell me, why... Haven't you been married? I mean, you, uh, obviously you had opportunity, right? I like my own company. Uh -huh. I'm afraid of someone stealing my money. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, you get married, and what happens four somebody, years later? Somebody steals your money. Yeah. 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 Okay. But that's the reason why, or just you never found the right person? Well, also Letterman. I wouldn't go out with the staff, and that was pretty much... Well, 15 hours a day. But I know people that you knew on the staff, women, who you were very close to. Yes, but I also felt if it didn't work out and you're still you working work there with that oh, person. Oh, you don't want that. You don't want yeah. that. Because I saw that. that. I saw that happen at Letterman. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where someone goes out with person X or whatever, and then it breaks up, and then it becomes very uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Incredibly uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. Um, I never. I had the same policy. I never would uh, have a, a, a sex or anything with somebody that I worked with, because you know, it, 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 even let, let's say it doesn't become a romance. Let's say it's just an overnight fling. You still got to walk in the next day, and they're yeah. there. You know. You know, like I know one member of the staff who was sleeping with three women on the staff at the same time. Oh, I'm great. sure. What? And then you want to be there the day they all found out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Len? I, I was just going to say, I'm sure Joe Rogelski is very unhappy about that. About what? About the fact that he wouldn't date anybody on the staff. <laughs> well, the that's only male like my, I could my think neighbor of. and I, we bought our houses at the exact same time. And like within a couple of weeks, I mean, he's right next door, Brett, bless his heart. Rides his son's bike over to my house, rings my doorbell, and asks me if I could come out and play. <laughs> so he and I became really, really close. And at one time, we Wait a minute. doesn't oh. work out. Oh. We've got a thirty-year mortgage. Exactly. <laughs> and we put. We're like, nah, eh, eh, eh. we're still good friends. Absolute good friends. But I was like, no. Nah. So we still cool. joke about putting a tunnel or a gate. And he's married now between, you know, the houses and stuff. But it's like, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, Marjorie, I, I, I've never asked her this. I mean, have you ever, uh, ever had a relationship with somebody at work? Yes. Yeah. How did that work out? 
Might well. (laughs) (laughs) Wasn't good. Yeah. No, you. I mean, it's so tough because you spend so much time at work and so many, you know, if you have accomplishments and goals and you say you have all those different kind of feelings. But yeah, man, if you do, then things go bad and it's the worst. Yeah, it's all bad. Yeah. Yeah. And 35 years of letterman. There was my years. Yeah. 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 There's no escaping. Yeah, there's no escaping. Well, that's why I would do it at film conventions. No, you on, know, the other, on the other, you get on the plane and go home. We know, yeah. we know, because of the uh, of the big scandal that hit over there that Dave did have sex with people at work. Yes, <laughs> and he's very yeah. good to them. He was very good with it. He was good to the entire staff. And his wife worked with us. You know, so again, sometimes it works out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what happens is it's very hard sometimes to prevent those relationships from happening because people are working together. You know, where do you meet people? You know, well, that's what I'm saying, exactly. Yeah, where do you meet the people you date? Farmersonly.com. You, 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 well, no, you meet... <laughs> Christian Mingle. Christian you Mingle, go. yeah. I, was, I wanted to join Christian Mingle just to find well, out. Well, university. <laughs> Instead, I went over to J-Date and guess who I met? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh. well, from my screen, you're playing to Andrew, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I was just thinking, where's Marjorie? She disappeared. Then she popped back up. Oh, so I have to go. You have to uh, go like that. Oh, oh, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. So, uh, 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 but no, I, I, uh, um, I'm trying to think that. I ever have anything at work now. No, not really. No, I've had people come on to me at work, and I didn't pick them up on it for that exact reason. You know, uh, That's not a relationship, Alex. And also, I never, I never hit on anybody at work, especially people who work close to me. I've had producers, female producers, and so on. Never came to me <laughs> because I valued their relationship to me in the workplace mm. more than I valued any possible yeah faction to my penis okay <laughs> now uh, edward why haven't you gotten married just never the right person came never out? the right person that's right yeah yeah um, um have there been opportunity uh i don't think so oh okay <laughs> <laughs> however you know if yeah. you could have made a fortune doing cartoon voice yeah uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, people told you you have a cartoon voice? No, no one ever told me that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, kind of, you sound like maybe you could be Gilbert Gottfried's father. Uh-huh. That's what I was thinking. Affleck Duck. Uh, what did you say? He, 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 he Affleck Duck. You could have yeah. gone up to be, to be the new Affleck Duck. Yeah. Affleck. Well, if I knew that, I would have tried out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, you know, workplace relationships are probably going to be a thing of the past now since where is the work there is no workplace <laughs> work from home yeah. <laughs> i hope none of you are invested in uh, commercial real estate commercial real estate is going to take a dive in new york that's for sure oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah you know what i'm hearing all these rumors of everybody moving out of new york is that true yeah, yeah san francisco area oh, yeah, area too they, oh yeah i know the bay area when, absolutely when they say that though they're talking about moving physically out of new york but they might be moving to new jersey moving to yeah. or or pennsylvania or she has two people she has two people she works with who had places in new york city one of them moved up to where connecticut right right, right, right new york and uh, uh one of the others moved over to um uh new jersey one of them did move out to California, but Francisco. yeah. But what people do, I think, what I what somebody was saying was happening is that uh, it has now gotten to the point where companies are allowing people to work from home, and it's into the indefinite future. For instance, Google. Well, they realize work from home works. Well, yeah, yeah. it does, and there's no overhead. Yeah. What people are right. doing now, ready for this? They're moving to foreign countries. Yeah. <laughs> well, because if they can work from home, they can work from home and it can be in Paris, you know? My yeah. my my son's best friend that he plays games with, he's a gamer, he lives right over here on the other side of the school. 
So I talked to my son. I said, why don't you go over and hang out with him this weekend? He goes, no, he's still in India. I said, school started already. He goes, yeah, he's logging on from India. Yeah. Wow. For wow. his, his, his high school right down here. I mean, oh your God. kid, your kid, uh, 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 wow. Kathleen, could probably uh, do his same school from up there. Well, listen, so, you know, he's registered at the high school here in town because I couldn't register him onto any um, online schools because of the whole funding right. thing in California, which quite frankly pissed me off. So when we move, I told him, you know, basically you're going to keep doing online. And what we'll do is we'll use, Aunt, you know, Uncle Eric and Auntie Christina's address because they literally live right down the street from the high school. And so we'll just pretend that we're still in Tracy, it doesn't, but, you know, we'll be across the street from the ocean. I mean, if we're yeah. doing homeschooling, if, if you're doing work from home and you don't have to go back to work anymore, you can do all your work from home. Why not be in Paris? Why not be in Paris? Yeah. Why not be in I mean, Paris? I'll be just, I'll just be doing eBay. What I'm going to be doing basically is liquidating four estates. I mean, I, we have one guy who calls our show at night who's in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. And wow. there, he, there he is. He may, he looks as clear as Brian is looking right now or as clear as Edward is looking or Andrew. Uh, and, and if he wanted to go online to work uh, it, 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 somewhere, he could do it from home. Marjorie could do it from home, but she feels she has to go into the office every now and then. But, if they, now and then. but if they completely set up her job being at home, you know, she could do it from you could do it from anywhere, right? Yeah, except for the times that I have to go in. Yeah, but I mean if that if that part of it was eliminated because everything got mailed to you and so on and so forth, the end of the day, you could really just do all your work from home. And it Hardly matter stuff in three years. Look, yeah, I'm in China. Look, Andrew just moved. <laughs> I'm in China. <laughs> the other? We were there, Alex. Right huh? there. We were there, the Great Wall. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is Actually, nice. Actually, here's, here's where I, I am. Alex. Hell. And yeah. hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I became a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, has Phil popped back on, or is he completely Phil, disappearing? Phil has not been seen hiding her hair wow. for a week and a half, I think. So. Uh, Ed, uh, what did you do during the uh, during the virus? Did you stay home? Um, Sorry, I went out. It really you know, it doesn't bother me. Uh, do you wear a mask? Oh, well, I wear a mask. If I go into a store, I wear a mask. But then if I'm out in the street, I don't wear it. Yeah. Now, what was your profession? I worked for the city. For the city? Yeah. Doing what for the city? I worked for the uh, park department. Oh, very nice. Oh, really? Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. We have a guy who lives on our floor who, who is a gardener. Uh -huh. He used to. He used to. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. But uh, he, uh, well, his mother died or something. He left in my house, and he has enough money. He doesn't have to work for the city. And, uh -huh. You know, plus he, uh, he's practicing his music and doing stuff. Mm. Uh, and and Shecky and I never go out anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> well, if there was somewhere to go, I would go, but everything shut down. Well, Marjorie yeah. says to me, "Look, you should get out." And I go, "Where?" <laughs> You know, I'm no. not, not getting on the subway. I mean, I, don't know day I might say, hey, I'll go down to Apple. I'll take the subway down to Apple and we'll see what's happened at the Apple store. Or I'll, 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 I think they're still closed. No, they're not. No, they're open. They open. They're open, but you got to wait in line to get in. You know, well, I won't do that. So that's, that's the other reason I'm not doing anything Labor Day weekend. What, yeah. 100? It's 104 in San Jose? Yeah, it's going to be 106 uh, by 3 p.m. So... I went. I went and did stuff in the morning every morning this weekend. And Wait a minute. Where are you, Len? Where's 108? Livermore. Oh yeah, yeah. He's it was worse. 111 yesterday. Wow. Yeah, 111 in Tracy today. Yes. Yeah, they're they're inland. They're All worse. Right, Andrew. What's the temperature where you are? 70. 77. 64 oh. degrees, and we've got four inch, almost four inches of rain today. Oh, I'm so. The pond's overflowing. Yeah. Damn but it. you know that Denver was 90 today. And yeah. No, tomorrow. Yeah. San crazy. Francisco hit a hundred. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Of that course, is, like, there's I, no global warming. 
I can you tell know, you what I can, I can tell you what time it is here in New York. <laughs> oh, man. Hold on a second. <laughs> Didn't have mine. Here we go. But Marjorie, that's, here we that's, go. I, here we go. I could probably stay at home too, and I like going to work just to get some, you know, get some routine, and you get out. The problem is that in in our office. Bill, oh, it's one hundred and three in trade. Yeah, we're, we're supposed to get up to one hundred and twelve. We're going to die. We just one hundred and nine. <laughs> Oh Jesus! I'm going to go to the pool. Quick. Yeah, but yeah, that's like right, Drew. That's exactly the where they live. Is empty. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you can see out the window back there, but I do have a pool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. hey, Len, where do you live? Livermore? <laughs> <laughs> I got three hey, kids. Yes, I, Come on, you bring, bring them up. Here's bring them up. Yeah, I, I was born and raised in the Bay Area. I don't remember. Te I I work in Sacramento, and I don't remember temperatures like that. Yeah. Well, remember when I bought my house in Tracy Alex? You'd say, "Hey, come on, spend the weekend." And I would literally show up with my bag and shorts and a tank top, and he would yeah. look at me and laugh. <laughs> because because I'd before. have to go in, put on jeans, I'd grab one of his sweaters, pull it over me, and then we'd walk because, up to because San Francisco is the world's only air-conditioned city. Yes, yes. You know. and the fog horns were the best. Yeah, but I mean, the fog would roll in at night. No matter how oh, hot yeah. it was during the day, the fog would roll in at night. And Cool that whole thing. Oh, it was out. perfect. Yeah, and it oh, yeah. was perfect. That's you would have loved it, Marjorie, because what you call perfect sleeping weather. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love chilly. Yeah. You know, had it the last three nights have been great. Oh, it's been mm. it's been really nice here in New York, but it's gonna get yeah. it's getting humid again. Yeah. Does it get humid in New York? Oh yeah. Yes, of course. Humidity really? you know, humidity in New York is overbearing, actually. Uh, you know, they say it isn't the heat that'll get you, it's the humidity. It really is. I mean, I've had days here where it's 85 and there's no humidity and it's fine. Yeah. Are you, are you, here's our humidity right now. I don't know if you can see that. 12%. Yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> well, so what you got is a dry heat. Well, yeah. In California, I'm going to humidity, humidity, you in dry California heat or humidity heat? would be considered earthquake weather. Yes, true. Yeah. I never understood that earthquake weather. It's a stupid myth. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's I earthquake mean, weather. Why? Weird. Well, because we had an earthquake last night, and that's why it's earthquake weather. Did you guys really? What? No. Well, no. An earthquake? But you know there's a fault running right through Central Park, right? Well, no, I want this street. What? Watch the documentary on, on the earthquakes on the hold, East Hold on a second, Kathleen. Yes, Jackie, where, where is it? 125th Street, the fault line. Yeah. Oh, really? really? It's right up the street from yeah. there. Okay, but isn't there oh. one going through Central Park? Too? It could be. And it does every now and then shake a little bit, but uh, we don't feel it, you know, if it shows we, up. We never had earthquakes until they started all the fracking. That's <laughs> right. right, yeah. Pennsylvania and Eastern Ohio, we get earthquakes yeah. now because of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the yeah. biggest fault in America is the new Madras fault, which is in the Midwest. I yeah. think you're wrong. I think the biggest fault is in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, That's the assholeria fault, from what I understand. Yes, yes, yes. Or it's a not my fault fault. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other jokes we can make about that? Got there's, there's something about blame in there, but I haven't got there yet. I'm you know what I love about these shows on Monday, and and I do them uh, out of purely out of love. I you know this is. Uh, this is not work for me at all. It's always just a nice a bunch of pleasant people. We got this hour. We talked about everything from 9/11 to uh, whether you have had sex at work or not. You know, <laughs> it, it, well, we didn't say sex at work. That's different. Uh, yeah. Let me check That's another show. Hold on. That's a whole different show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, it, it's really been, it's been great talking to all of you tonight. I really, I really love, I, I look forward to this. I do too. Uh, you know, uh, and, and let me thank Edward. Edward, come back and see us again, okay? Okay. You know, because I mean, yeah, come on. I don't... it sounds like you don't have a life, neither do we. <laughs> so you come on back. Yeah. Oh, look who. Huh? Look who Brian brought in. Wait a minute. Then it was Andrew, and then there's Shecky. Oh, and, look who's uh, here. And then there's Lynn, and then there's uh, a Schmoody, as I used to call her, Kathleen. And there is Brian. Wait a minute. That doesn't look like Brian. That looks like a girl. Hi. 
Who's, Hi. Who's Brian, Hello. Adrian? Who's Brian? Hey, Adrian. What? Daddy. 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 Boy, <laughs> uh, you know, don't 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 turn around uh, there, Brian. I might kidnap your kid. You know. <laughs> everybody, why don't you wave a big wave goodbye? I'll wave goodbye at you, and thank everybody for watching our little uh, pop up show that we do here. And thank you, and uh, enjoy yourself. And thank you all. Have I really a good week, sir. Okay. Have a great week. All right. See you, See you next week. <laughs>